Oh, damn it. It's fine. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to oh, we're, we're, oh, we're live. Yeah, oh, we're, we're live. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, they tried to stop us, but we couldn't be stopped. <laughs> Just took an hour, but we're fine. Uh, welcome fine. We're to good. Playhouse. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Welcome to Playhouse Live. Uh, if you don't know if it's your first time here, this is our weekly catch up of all the news of the previous week. Uh, we go over all the big headlines, we talk about them, share our thoughts on them, and such. Uh, John, how are you doing this fine week? I'm doing good. It's been a busy week all around on personal end and just trying to catch up on everything. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, watching a lot more American television than I would care to in a, in a normal week. I, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got it's, my it's been fun mug. being an American. John, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm in a hard Christmas vibe right now. I don't know if you are can you see really? the hat. Well, well, There's look reindeer to- on it. There's, there's like snowflakes okay, and stuff yeah. on it. I see the uh, snowflakes. I see the the antlers and the deer or the reindeer. I'm guessing. I just get you like got the, the cup smell, going. The smell of tea. My little asteroid smug <laughs> here. Um, I I I get when people say like it's November. Shut the hell up. I get it, and I mm. won't like rub it in anyone's faces about Christmas. But like, I was sitting there on November first, and my brother downstairs. I could hear him. He was blasting the Michael Bublé Christmas album, and I was <laughs> here for it. And I I, I just I've. I'm going to be this way all, all month, <laughs> all the way. Okay, I, okay, I'll be the Scrooge here uh-huh. because I worked in retail for so long, and I, I work in education now, but because I was in retail for so long, we started Christmas right after Halloween, and that's all I listen to for November and December is just Christmas music. Yeah. So I have a unfortunate hard and fast rule of we do not do any sort of Christmas decoration stuff until the day after uh Halloween. What is happening right Thanks, now? Thanks, Oh, hey, Michael Bublé. There you yeah, are, Michael Bublé. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? What is happening right now? I'm very scared. Yeah, Michael Bublé just off screen there, handing John a beverage. Just, uh, hey, me and yeah. Michael go back a couple mm-hmm. years. My uh, sister, her ex boyfriend, um, met Michael Bublé because he was like working on his house. He was a contractor. <laughs> what? Yeah, he is pretty chill dude, from what I hear. Actually, that's. That's pretty freaking awesome. I love that. Yeah. I dig that. Is, is from what I understand. I, I want you to know real fast because I know we're, we're, you're in the Christmas mood. It's hard for me mainly because it is 23 degrees Celsius right now. Right. It, uh, it, I mean, being in Texas, we don't get snow until February. Yeah. I was going to say, does really. it ever settle down in Texas? Like, I, I didn't even know you guys got snow in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every, well, it's more sleet mm-hmm. or that wet snow. Every now and then we'll get some good snow. And when I say good snow, it's about. 30 minutes to an hour of it and that's about it mm-hmm. it's more ice than anything and everyone loses their mind like they forget how to drive mm-hmm. uh so yeah christmas is a month away but right now we're in november which means even mm-hmm. more cause for celebration this is the big month when it comes to video games all the big holiday releases uh particularly this year with next gen uh so let's get into our first story um it's actually john it's 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 it qualifies for breaking news, so here we go. I, I'm with this. I like it. All right. <laughs> um, breaking news as of today. Uh, it's N7 day. It's November 7th, as you understand. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition has been announced. The remaster... Uh, that's been rumored for a long time. Uh, the worst kept secret in the industry, to be honest. Yeah. Um, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think this was initially rumored to be coming out around this time, in November, which everyone was like, yeah. "No, don't do that." Next gen <laughs> Cyberpunk. No, go away, away. Um. So yeah, it's it's been it's spring twenty twenty one now, but they announced it today. Um, and an official blog post. It's coming spring 2021 for Xbox One, PS4, and PC, uh, and there will be enhancements for PS5 and Xbox Series X when it comes to that. Uh, yeah. It includes Mass Effect 1 and 3 and all the single-player DLCs and promo items. Uh, love to see it. Better re- resolution and frame rate, all the bells and whistles you'd uh, normally get from a remaster. Uh, overhaul textures, character shaders, effects. Um and yeah, let, let's just start with that, John. Uh, do you have any love for Mass Effect? Did you play the Mass Effect back in the day? I actually watched Rose play a little bit, little bit of it in the, oh, on the 360. Didn't really get into it. It's, at the time, not my cup of tea, but that was, what, 10-ish years ago? 
Mm-hmm. I'm completely fine with trying this now. Like I, I know the love of this game and how much people like Bioware did good for one and two. And then three was a little iffy and we just apparently don't talk about Andromeda. I, I, I actually am cool with trying this game. I don't have a love for it, but I think it'd be fun to discover what it is. What, what is it? The whole thing's about and how to like, how it actually works. Like in the sense of like those characters that you can actually create, not create, but like those connections that you have. And, I mean, a little brown chicken, brown cow apparently is in there. That's kind of fun. So uh, I, I'm, I'm down to try it, actually. I'd, I'm with you. Worst kept rumor. But the more I kept on hearing about it, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe this might be kind of fun just to goof around with and go down different paths. Or I have the controller for like an hour and then I give it to Rose and she completely changes the narrative of the story with her choices. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know if this game will, um, for like new players, will hit as hard as uh, they did back in the day but it's uh, one of those sort of hallmark games one of those touchstone games where i feel like the whole ps3 and xbox 360 era one of the big things was player agency right and making Mm -hmm. decisions that affect the narrative and go in these different paths and what was your playthrough like what was here's what i did on mine and mass effect was not a small player in that field uh and sort of you know made bioware that and Dragon Age yeah. sort of made Bioware what they were. Um, and it's sort of been like, they've been trying to diminish that legacy as hard as they can with this uh, this time with Mass Effect Andromeda and, uh, yeah. and Anthem. Uh, I, I Let me be honest. I wanted Anthem to be good. Mm-hmm. For, for Bioware's sake, I wanted Anthem to be good. Like, I was on the, the hesitant hype train when it first was announced mm-hmm. at, what, E3 2017? God knows, 20, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, all right, I, 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 you have my attention. And then the more I just learned about it and the more I watched it and, like, I was mm-hmm. like, this, there's nothing to this game. Yeah. And which is unfortunate, actually. I'm sure, I'm sure with another year, there would have been a good game there. I think it's the same story yeah. with Andromeda, maybe. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, especially after Andromeda, I thought after Mass Effect 3, but especially after Andromeda, uh, I just had this thing where, and I'm not like a huge Mass Effect guy, so, but I've, I, I heard, I hear reports again from friends of mine who are big into the series, and uh, yeah. I, I thought the vibe was that, okay, you don't need to just like keep doing this franchise. Like, you can take a gen off, right? Mm-hmm. You can just like not have it, and then when it comes back, it'll be even more beloved. Um, yeah. And I think it- that's what the this is for this is getting people back in reminding people what mass effect was about to then lead on to what was also uh touched on during this announcement is that there is a new mass effect game in development featuring a veteran team who worked on mass effects before um Mm -hmm. not clear on the the timeline for that or uh who's behind it but you know um good to see that but yeah i think the strategy of remaster collections leading to a new release or like a revival yeah. of a franchise has been successful in the past um yeah and i always love to, to see that happen yeah i'm with you i think this is that nice let me put you back in the cultural zeitgeist and you remember how cool and how awesome mass effect one through three ish were and then we're getting a new one coming in i hope they actually do the god of war kind of concept where it's you know it's there the core essence is there but they they change enough where it's like it's a new thing that's kind of not easy, but you can bring new players in because I, I played the original God of War wasn't my cup of tea. And I just heard so many people talking about 2018, the 2018 mm-hmm. version. I was like, screw it. I'll play it. One of my probably one of my games of the generation, to be absolutely mm-hmm. honest. So I for the sake of Bioware <sighs> and fans, I want this to happen for them, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's had a, a rough gen. So like Bioware. Yes. Used to be the one jewel in their crown, but yeah, now mm-hmm. it's um, they they need this to go well. Um, part now of me wish, respawn. yeah, oh, respawn is like their top dog. Yeah, now. The respawn, respawn is, is now the, yeah. the golden goose. Respawn and Joseph Farris are like the yes. two. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, I a part of me does wish this game was out now. Uh, like a yeah. week before next gen, I could par through maybe one or two of those at least. And I'm in a big mm-hmm. space mood right now. I'm playing. Uh, I'm getting back into the Outer Worlds. I dropped that a long Ooh. time ago. I really, uh-huh. really loved that game, but uh, I was having like graphical issues because of the amount of RAM I had. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave it. Um, yeah. Upgraded my RAM recently, so now I'm picking it back up again. And I'm just loving having an adventure in space. Uh, yeah. So yeah, maybe by the time uh, 
I don't know, like, when in spring. I'm thinking, like, January, February. I'm not thinking t- this is too far away. Uh, no, I, I'll i say March, because I, I think we're Sony's proven that you can drop a game in March. and well, Actually, Nintendo proved you can drop a game in March, and it works great. I think this would probably... I'm hoping March and just have that weird little cluster of different genres of games that we can have that kind of get us to whatever in God's name E3 is going to be, mm-hmm. and then from E3 back to this season. Yeah. And for a while as well, I think uh, it's going to be a while before we, uh, just the same as this gen, get a real showpiece of what yeah. these next-gen systems can do. And for a large part, especially going like embargoes broke this week in the Series X and the PS5, and like most of the showcases has been, look how well these old games run. <laughs> look yeah. how good this looks now. And I feel like Mass it Effect would be faster. another great test piece. It's just like, hey, look at yeah. Mass Effect on the Series X. Yeah, this is great. It loads faster. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm good with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, speaking of next gen, uh, it's time for our weekly dive into the next gen arena. Um, this week is going to be all about drive space. There's been a lot of things uh, that have been revealed about the consoles this week, with embargoes breaking, as I mentioned, uh, reviews going up, etc. But I want to talk about specifically drive space because it's a thing we've touched yeah. on a few times in the show. And I want to c- compare the two head to head. So one of the yeah. the juicy facts we've got uh, this week in the info dumps is how much actual usable space we will have. Uh, so Series S uh, advertised at 512 gigabyte uh, SSD. Sorry, I keep wanting to say hard drive. Uh, <laughs> but the Series S has 364 gigabytes of usable space. Uh, Xbox Series X... 802 gigabytes of usable space from the one terabyte advertised. PS5, 667.2 gigabytes available of the 825 advertised. Um, So yeah, somewhere in the realm of 150 to 200 gigabytes being used already on each system. Um, Yeah, that... That's a little worrisome, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I... Okay. Especially like I've I decided that I'm gonna go all digital this uh, gen just to see because I like how it is on the Switch so I'm just I'm gonna I'm all in now so I've already I pre-ordered Valhalla I have for the Series X I've pre-ordered um, Spider Man the collector or the gold edition so I can get uh, Miles Morales and Spider Man and Dar- uh, Demon Souls and like I, Miles Morales is clocking in at like 116 gigs or 111 gigs that's including uh, the PS4, the original uh, Spider-Man. Uh, hold on, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm looking it up real fast. Valhalla is at 65 gigs, and uh, Dark Souls is at 66. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm cutting into that really hard at the very beginning, and that's not including like bug snacks and yeah. what are their other games I'm going to download from like Game Pass or John, any games I'm pulling. Yes. Will bug snacks be? Over 35 gigabytes. Absolutely not. No? No. All right. I, I'll, I'll take oh, that back. Are we going to do this? I'll take that back. I, okay. I, I see tw- 22. I see I see it being, give or, I'll go give or take three at 22. I think you're seriously underestimating that game. I, I think there's oh, come on. nooks and crannies. I think they're... You saw that, like, Pizza Dragon. How big do you think that Pizza Dragon is in 4K? Look, I I don't... Okay. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, no, no, no. I'm going to do this right now. It, like, how big is Buck Snacks? Do, do we know? Oh, okay. I, that's a good question. Do we know? The bet the bet stands. Oh, okay, no, no, that's fine. Buck Snacks. Let's, let's see. Let me... I'm excited. This is the first time we might actually get a better solved on the show. <laughs> but, okay, how big is Bucks next file size? Uh, ch- 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 son of a bitch. Well, how much is it? How much? Okay, okay. This is this is from Screen Rant. Okay. So it, it's not fully saying, but it says so far things appear rosy for upcoming consoles. PS Five game file sizes appear to range between fifty. And 105 gigs, depending on the game. Oh, John. So I, I mean that that is just taking that screen rant. And this was on in September. All right. So everything well, you need. Okay, let's. 
At least we don't have to wait too long for this one. We'll know by next no. week how big Bug Snacks is. Yes. And so for the first time next week, we can announce that a bet will be resolved. A bet, a bet will a, be resolved. A debt will have to be paid. What that we means, we'll that have out. to figure out. But, yeah. you know, uh, it will be Bug Snacks themed, which mm. excites me. I don't even know what it is yet, but uh, I'm excited for a Bug Snacks uh, bet punishment. But yeah, there you go. Um we should if I lose okay I got it if I lose I will eat my uh least favorite food or f- least favorite um fruit unless you want to eat a bug dude uh, that, we can get bugs I thought you were going to say you were going to eat a bug I'll eat a bug I don't care I've already <laughs> eaten a bug they're full of protein right like who cares I mean all you got to do is find these sour cream and onion uh maggots right the fact that I know that bothers me but <laughs> You went that right with it. I was thinking like the the candy snacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, well, we'll do that. that the candy person works. who loses eats a candy snake. <laughs> Seems more like a victory. Right? I'm gonna buy I mean, some I don't candy know. snakes regardless. Like I just want one though. Uh, they were. Right. Cr- I'm sorry. Yes, Rose is right. They were crickets. They right. were not. I didn't eat maggots. I ate crickets. I'm trying um, to find like. Oh, doesn't say. This is a this is an absolute tangent. Do you guys have the show over there? I'm a celebrity. Get me out of, out of here. Where they eat the no, like, what? Can, kangaroo testicles no. and the all that stuff. No. Okay. Okay. That. Please that's continue fine. with this. No, it's, it's we're moving on. It's it's a long show, John. Uh, <laughs> so, what bothers me about this? It, I kind of get it with Xbox, right? Because someone explained to me like a lot of this is to do with quick resume. And the way sure. Quick Resume works is they basically set aside some space in your SSD uh, to just like pop that safe state on the SSD so you can like quickly jump back in. That's why it works uh, when it's like not even plugged in. You can just like plug yeah. it out, plug it back in, you're straight in with Quick Resume. And that's for uh, Xbox Bullet is five to six games. Uh, so yeah, like you, you imagine each game is like. Somewhere bet- I couldn't get a figure. It's somewhere between ten and sixteen gig per game on mm-hmm. the thing. Uh, so that makes sense to me. PS Five does not have a quick resume feature. Where's all no. that space going? At least they don't have it now. Uh, yeah. They might in future, and that might be part of it. But yeah, no quick resume on the PS Five. No expandable storage at launch like Xbox, and it that also, upset me again. PS5 does not allow you to store your games on an external drive. Uh, at least that your PS5 games. Uh, yeah. That's rough. <laughs> that's real rough. Yeah, that's... I mean, we've already result, we've talked about storage to nauseam, to be honest with everyone, mm-hmm. but it makes so much sense now, because even though you buy the physical, you got to download something onto your system and still play it, and it sucks that Sony's like, yeah, we're going to update it so you can expand your storage. I'm like, I understand it to a point because there's not very, there, there's a good amount of uh, next gen games coming out, but it's one of those, you got to tell us soon because I'm already looking at SSDs to pop into the PS5. I need to know so I get a terabyte or something mm-hmm. like that. I, so I find it very odd that it's like, yeah, you can't expand it just yet. Don't worry. We're going to give it to you in an update. We don't know when that update's happening. And I, I know from the, it was an interview, and I don't know if it was Tom Ryan, but they were talking about how they have to make sure that they know that the consumer solid states can keep pace with the solid state that's in the PS5 mm-hmm. before they actually like give you give us a list. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm good with that. That's fine. I just pick up the pace a little bit. Oh yeah, and um, again, we talked about like storage being low at launch for these things because. You're going to have these things for eight years and storage prices mm-hmm. is going to come down. Uh, yeah. So they thought expandable storage would be better later when it's cheaper. Um, yeah. It's the fact that like Xbox allows you to put it on an external hard drive that you already have and swap it over as you need them, right? That's like at least a, a good temporary solution. Yeah. For some reason, PS5 is just like, nah, you yeah. either have it or you don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that. Like, what what's so bad about just taking it and putting it on the external mm-hmm. and then moving it back. Cause I, I know, and you're right with like series X. So they're like, Oh yeah, you can play it off the external. You're just not going to get the uh, oomph from playing it on everything built in. So yeah, I, I don't understand why this is 
PlayStation's move right now, unless they've got something, a great card in their sleeve a month in. I, I don't know, but I, I think that's very weird to me that, no, I can't move something on my external, four terabyte external drive connected to my PS4 that I'm just moving to my PS5, but none of my PS5 games are going to be able to go there. Yeah. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting, and we'll have to get these consoles in our hands before we know for sure, but the, the article I referenced uh, did mention that PS5 seems to have drastically improved download speeds um, mm. from even the PS4. So on the same internet, uh, they tested two games. They test- tested the Sky 5, which is uh, six and a half gigs. On the PS4 okay. Pro, it took 10 minutes to download. On the PS5, it took two minutes to download. Um, and then they tested it. Fist of the North Star, which is 36 gigs. On the PS4 yeah. Pro, it took an hour to download. On the PS5, it took seven minutes. Um so yeah, again, like that person's internet is really good. I doubt I'm gonna be mm-hmm. able to get games to download that quick. But PS4 is just the slowest thing in the world at downloading games. Uh, and if the PS5 can improve on that a little bit, that might ease the blow of having to uninstall and reinstall games all the time. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm interested of how like like with you, your internet, how that's gonna work. My internet, it am I forced? Am I going to be forced to go ahead and sign up for a gigabit download? And the only reason I haven't is it's not gigabit upload. I don't understand why my carrier does that. I've got a cousin. I think I've talked about this. Is a cousin who lives in Oklahoma who has five down, and it took him three days to download Fallout Four. Yeah. How how is that going to work on the PS Five? I I don't. The magic behind that I cannot comprehend in my head just yet. No, for sure. And it's like data caps. And I've had those same stories from friends as well. It's like, hey, I can play Battlefront 2 with you guys, but it's going to take a week. Like, um, Like, and so. What? (laughs) I I just, I know, like, there's already conversations happening in boardrooms uh, or virtual boardrooms since 2020, uh, where it's like they have PowerPoint presentations up with like stats. And it's like, Mm -hmm. this is the average amount of free space ps5 owners have right now they they just yeah. like pulled that data from sony we need to make our game less than this amount <laughs> yes like otherwise they're just not gonna buy it because they know they have no room for it <laughs> yeah yeah and, and do we and I, I we talked about this i don't remember now off the top of my head does playstation have that selective download thing that xbox has where if you don't play the multiplayer you don't have to download it or is it all or nothing on the ps5 from, I, and I really just don't remember. From what I understand, it's a game by game basis. Uh, okay. All right. So you're literally, it's just like installing like DLC for a game. They'll just have separate mm. uh, okay. executables. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to, uh, to know whether like Sony games for the large part don't have multiplayer or additional components anyway. True. Um, so first party, maybe not as big as a concern. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's going to be whether Sony and Microsoft try to encourage that but ultimately i think it's up to the third parties to decide okay um yeah in terms of then next gen arena i think again this is another just complete white boy i think xbox have, have taken this xbox is doing good on almost every front right now three nil up in our next gen arena yep. currently three to zero uh they're running away with it um another thing i think as well is when we're talking about ssds uh is load speed right and so mm-hmm. there have been lots of comparisons done with uh backwards compatible games and their load speeds uh for a large part mostly the same uh on both systems but xbox is just like a little bit quicker in a few yeah. instances um but what i think is going to be like uh, not enough people are talking about is again going back to quicker sim where yeah. those load times are even more drastically reduced because you know, uh, it, it's it's just not a cold boot, right? You can just go mm-hmm. straight into the game. You don't even have to do loading screens, right? Load like time spent in the startup splash screens aren't factored into these uh, timed boots for each game that outlets are doing. And so, like, yeah. and again, it's like five to six games, like in a month. Who's playing more than that? Who's like booting up more games than that? You're putting up more than five to six games in a month. Like, dude, not- I do three. 
three. Okay, and, and, and this is a good this is a good thing because I was actually thinking about this. Yeah, think about like all right. So couch capades, Rose and I are couch capades. We have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Those are three different games that we're playing, yeah. and it might be on different systems. Then we do YouTube videos. That's a completely different game, and then our personal game that we're playing. So we're there, right there, there's five games. Right. And this is what upsetting me is because we. I'll be honest. We both lean PlayStation. I love the Xbox. I will champion it. I think it's a great system. We both know. Everyone knows. Uh, exclusives sell uh, sell consoles. I'm really excited to play PlayStation games, and we play a lot of them on YouTube and Twitch. But since there's no quick resume, it actually kind of upsets me because I'm like, I, I can't have these games loaded, ready to go to flip out because some days we just don't jump in there until the next day. So it's it, it is a little weird that we can't do that on PlayStation. And I figured PlayStation would want that quick resume feature. And I'm with you. Maybe it's maybe it is a uh, update down the road when we find out the SSD thing, too. But yeah, I, I'm one of those people who have maybe five games and that's not including the switch mm-hmm. yeah i've got about five games go collectively rose and i have about five to seven games going yeah and so i'll, I'll be interested to see you talk about quicker zoom because you'll actually have the series x in your hands uh yes but yeah for me maybe i just have like a set in my way system for how i play games right but like mm-hmm. i could imagine if the ps5 had quicker zoom with five or six titles like how that would happen for me because i always have my main game that i'm playing right now and then maybe like a smaller indie like 10 hour secondary game and then yeah. crash bandicoot and tetris right that's four uh and then like i can't even think of how to fill five and six like maybe just like one-offs streaming i yeah. don't know but like for the largest part of me in a month like the idea of like booting up a game once and then not having to do it again for edges <laughs> is just like really appealing to me Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I I hundred percent agree with you on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at chat. Oh, Rose is right. I thought Spider Man Miles Morales with the other game, uh, normal Spider Man was a hundred and oh no, it was sixty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rose is right. I was just looking at that, going, did I say that wrong? Because I think I said the download size on uh, for Spider Man Miles Morales uh, should be about fifty gigs of hard space uh, for Miles Morales. Yeah. I don't see uh, where it says Spider-Man, though. Okay. Tim points out a thing. Uh, so he's looking at Spider-Man Miles Morales is seemingly 50 gigabyte on PS5, 52 on PS4, weirdly enough. I think that's the that thing as good. well that a lot of people are sort of glossing okay. over is that yeah. for some reason, file sizes are getting smaller on next-gen consoles. I don't mm-hmm. know whether that's an initiative because of the lack of drive space or whether it's like just the technology is there that it just means they can. Make I'd say the technology is probably there. Yeah, because like I you mean, can you yeah. can load more quickly from SSD mm-hmm. straight into RAM. Uh, so there's probably like some technical wizardry you can do there where you don't have to think about uh, yeah that problem anymore. Um, okay, so 105 all together. Think thanks Tim. I was trying to figure that out. I'm like I think I saw 110 mm-hmm. when uh for both the that collector's edition or gold edition of. Miles Morales, so okay, cool. Yeah, hundred. There, there's a hundred and five of my. What was it? Six sixty seven point two gigs. Yeah, thanks, Spider Man. Um, yeah, I just wonder how long it's going to be before we get PS five uh, expandable storage. Um, yeah, it's worrying me now. Like, I knew we weren't going to have it at launch, uh, but I thought by launch we would have a date in mind. Like, yeah. you're not going to get it now, but like. By June, we'll have it or whatever. Um, but yeah, no word. Is it? Is that? Is that something they'll talk about in a state of play? That doesn't seem like that's probably a blog post, right? That that's got to be a blog post. I yeah. don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, these state of plays have just randomly been dropping now. Like the Dark Souls one or Demon Souls one yesterday. All of a mm-hmm. sudden, there was a state of play. But yeah, that one that seems more blog post than anything. So we're just gonna wake up one day and be like, oh hey, here's the SSD list that you can use. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Mark, Mark Cerny is going to be holding a baton, and it's like this is a terabyte. <laughs> yeah. Um. What's so Xbox? You don't. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, you don't think they're not going to let you do a terabyte, do you? No, what if it's only? What if it's? What if it's only five hundred gigs? That they because they've they've got to figure out the ones that they want to do for the SSD. I'm just throwing out a weird concept of they don't. 
it looks a little weird in my opinion, personal opinion, that I'm going to go out and buy a terabyte solid state drive, which is bigger than what the PlayStation 4 gave me. So uh, I, I like, does, do I you th- think we'll get one? I think that's their intent. I think they'll have a slew of options, but like you're seeing 10 terabyte SD cards oh, yeah. on Amazon stuff. Uh, I think that was always a plan, like get away with as little as possible as you can on the PS5 mm-hmm. to drive down the price. And for those who care, True. they'll pay a premium for the five terabyte one we offer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, but like, I think there'll be like two hundred gig ones, five hundred gig ones, the whole, mm-hmm. the whole options. Uh, yeah. And I think that's part of why they're waiting so long. They want like the whole slate there, and it's like there's loads of them. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Xbox taking it for another week on Next Gen Arena. I don't know how long we're going to keep this segment going since next week will be in the Next Gen. It will be current yeah. Gen Arena. Uh, but we'll see how that pans out. Um, so yeah, our next story is uh, a rumor. Uh, Take 2 Switch is bro. reportedly oh. in the process of acquiring Codemasters. Um so, so John, you're familiar with Codemasters racing game aficionados. They, yeah. They do dirt game, they do grid, project cars, Formula One, all those. They are the go-to kind of like uh, Playground and Turn 10. They, you need a race car game, it's Codemasters. Yeah. Worth $973 million, apparently. Uh, that's reportedly oh. what the rumor price is for this acquisition. Nearly a billion dollars. Uh, wow. Yeah. By Take Two. Um. And that's if they get it at that price. There's talk of, you know, so, some people are saying if they if they offer that, if Take Two goes through with that offer, Codemasters are mm. ready to accept it. Others are saying like that's too low, and Take Two might back out. But then other parties might be interested, like Activision, uh, uh, Tencent, because they want to buy everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like want to own everything. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it's going to come down to Tencent and Disney. That's all. That's everyone's going to be owned by one of those two things. Yeah. Xbox can buy Bethesda. Tencent can buy Microsoft. <laughs> like that's where we're at now. <laughs> Don't put that into the universe. We know it's going to happen. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that this has been like rumoring in uh, games industry, like stock market circles for a while. The stock mm. price of Code Masters has been going up and up and up. Um. Yeah. Uh. A billion dollars, John. <laughs> like I, I, I get Code Masters. Like they're good at yeah. what they do, and like they're really good at this one thing. And uh, you and, know, and maybe that's 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 the thing though. They're really good at that one thing. Yeah. Then it's worth the money if you want that one thing. Mm-hmm. I suppose. I mean, yeah. Like you then have the market share of racing games exactly. at that point. Because. I mean, Take two. Oh, everyone, help me. Do they have any kind of race car game? I I, I first went to like um. Oh, do they have anything? I, I why can't I well, remember right now? John, I think this is a perfect time to uh finally re- we're gonna we're gonna be talking about rumors a lot on Playhouse Live, and yeah. so I think now is the time to uh finally reveal the official Playhouse Spicy Rumor Index. Uh, John, I don't know if you have the tr- stream pulled up. Um, I do, actually. I have the okay. stream so I can see. Right. Uh, <laughs> Wait. Oh, hold on. So this is our way of classifying the flavor intensity of rumors that pass our newsfeed. Um, so, John, where... God damn it, I love you. <laughs> thanks. Where initially are you... Like, Let me go through the tiers first, just to explain it for people, just yeah. to give people an idea. At the bottom, we have Frosted Fleck. That is ice cold. Couldn't get any like colder than that in terms of like how hot this rumor is. Then there's okay. Chili Fib. Up from there is Rhyme Rumor. Then you got Tantalizing Teal. That's like the middle ground. That's like, okay, uh, there's something there. Oh, yeah, then right. we got Spicy Scoops. And then from there, we go up to Piping Hot Possibility. And at the very top of the scale, we got the Blazing Beast. Those are oh, the it. hottest rumors, the spiciest oh. rumors that, that, that almost go off the scale in how hot they are. Um, John, in your mind, how immediately where is this line for you? All right, I, I have to look at this again to make sure I'm going to say this correctly. <laughs> um, actually, I'll actually put this as a, as a spicy scoop because I'm with you. The 
holy shit, it's a billion dollars yeah. <laughs> for Codemasters. Uh-huh. And then when you think about what Take Two is going to be able to pull get out of that is just great racing games. And I'm like, I, I, I see where the billion dollars is actually well spent. I'll put this as spicy scoop. Right. Okay. Let me like blow your mind right now, though, because oh, Jesus, are you? Do you have another one? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, maybe later, but no. Uh, <laughs> this, if Tech to acquire Codemasters, I think the possibilities of us uh, it drastically increase the possibility of us getting the desired Midnight Club continuation. Yes. Take two owns Rockstar. 100%. We know Rockstar aren't going to make it. They're busy doing no. GTA 6 or whatever. Give it to Codemasters. Make Give it to Codemasters. Club. We're done. Yeah. I would love that. Yes, that's worth a billion dollars. Yeah. I am John. That's my opinion. It's a spicy scoop. Yeah, it's it's a spicy scoop. I think that's a good place to put it. Uh, I don't think I think it would have to go down to tantalizing teal if it was, you know, l- less valuable. But the fact that it's a billion yeah. dollars and like names like Tencent and Activision are being thrown around, spicy scoop. Definitely. Yeah, this is something someone wants, and yeah, I'm good with this. Spicy scoop. Yeah. Tim mentions in chat, basically every time the Smash community comes up with a character leak, it's always a Frosted Fleck. Guaranteed, right? right? You yeah. get the scale. You understand it. Frosted yeah. Fleck, bottom of the barrel. Um, so yeah, we will return to the, the spicy rumor index in future weeks when more rumors come up. We can also return to it if, if this comes back on next week's show, you know, and we feel like, hey... PlayStation might buy Codemasters. That might upgrade on the Space yeah. Room Randage. We might have to bring it up to a pipe and hot possibility. <laughs> Who knows? Um, <laughs> oh, shit, I love this. <laughs> but yeah, that is... We we have the market corner on that, John. In terms of Space Rumors uh, and like indexing them, we're the number one show to go for, to for that. I'm good with this. I'm, yeah. I also have to ask, did, did you do this because I pulled a fast one on you about the dual sense like i did not know this was happening and i freaking love it it's a thing that i wanted to do for a long time like way uh-huh. back when i used to do my own twitch streams i thought about the spicy uh-huh. rumor index uh but then I, I it came back to me and i was like this is perfect for, for play this, like, this is the time yeah i support it i love it it's great it revealed itself um so yeah uh that that is it for that um a lot, lot of accusations this week but yeah Talking about yeah. uh, some even more news, there's a, not, a lot of little nuggets of news this week. Um, so let's start off with the... That's the wrong thing. Hold on. Get it fixed. It. It's all good. It. Starting off with the medium is being delayed until January oh, 20th, 2021. that sucks so it's a, much. It's a stinger, John. It's a real stinger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the final pickup from my Fantasy League, I thought about Ghost Runner. I went with the medium. It was a mistake. I... I am so upset that Ghost. I actually put a bid into it and it didn't go through. I'm actually very upset with that. Yeah. Seems so I, your, I don't know what happened. Yeah. What seems to be your standard delay? It's just I was going to say it's just like, hey, we're nearly there, but we just need some polish. We're going to give yeah. it a few weeks just to make sure that the game comes out. We've talked about delays a lot on the show, especially it, the Cyberpunk. Yeah. It's good for us as the mm-hmm. people we want to play. I am actually very excited about the medium. To be honest, I. That was another one of those. I'm gonna since it is an Xbox exclusive, I was gonna get it and play it because mm-hmm. I need stuff to play on my Xbox Series X. But it, it does suck that it got pushed back. But we all know, little if especially that like it's not too far. Then yeah, it's just some polish. So more polish is good. Do you think I should have seen this coming? Because I was quite worried that it, we hadn't been seeing any of the medium uh, mm-hmm. in like the build up to Xbox Series X, and I just thought that meant. It's going to be bad, but delay yeah. makes a lot more sense to me now. No, I was thinking the same thing. Like we saw it during E3 and I think we saw a one time after E3 and then it just ghosted us. And we're, I was actually yeah, that myself. I'm like, yeah, you like it? <laughs> I was like, where is this game? And I, I went that route too. And I'm like, I don't know. Oh, I don't know if Xbox has very much like faith in this. And the medium has a very cool concept mm-hmm. about the, the two different worlds. And I'm like, I'm in on this, but with how quiet, uh, Xbox has been. I was like, maybe they're just not. Uh, they don't believe in the game. But this, I'm with you. It makes a lot more sense of just a little more polish, and we're going to be good to go. So, hey, something to play in January. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's what sort of made me confident about uh, picking up for the, the league as I did is because I thought this was a perfect next gen showpiece, right? And mm-hmm. they, they were they were talking that way the whole time, where it's like, hey, we're 
simultaneously rendering these two different uh, yeah. universes, dimensions, whatever. Um, and this is po- uh, possible thanks to the power of the Series X. Um, yeah. I thought that was cool. Um, but I think, no, January is a good place for it. January is when Resident Evil 7 came out. Uh, yeah. Like a January game, if, if done right, can like be really good. Uh, yeah. Just a good point in the year where nothing else really comes out. Uh, it gets its time to shine, and that's yeah. that's kind of what I'm I'm actually hoping this works out for the medium. That way, it's like, oh, this is a great game. It got away from Cyberpunk mm-hmm. and just the whole idea of the release week or the release month of November. So I, I I hope this does good for it, just in the long term of that. It's actually a really good game. Yeah, I think uh, that's the thing as well. I think end of January is you know when a lot of people will be like phasing themselves out of cyberpunk mm-hmm. fingers crossed uh yeah. if it comes out then uh <laughs> but yeah um good on the medium uh yeah. kerbal space program 2 another delay this one until fiscal blows year my 2023 mind. this blows my mind yeah uh a lot of complexity in, in those kerbals turns out mm-hmm. yeah um, uh, at work i got a buddy who actually really got into it and i picked it up as well and we would just like watch YouTube videos of how to do it and how scientific it actually is. And I was like, that's great. I was not prepared for 2020. That was three years mm-hmm. from now. And all right. I Again, being, games getting pushed back is good for consumers. Polish. This seems like a little excessive. If that That's just me, though. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- this was revealed in a Tech 2 financial report, the same report that talked about the Codemasters thing. Mm. Uh, the studio, I, I can't remember if they're just Kerbal Space Studio or whatever. Uh, they um, got purchased by Tech 2 a few years ago. There was a rumor at the time they were going to be purchased by Valve as well, which I thought was interesting yeah. for that game. Uh, but no, um, they were purchased by Tech 2. And yeah, like, that was going to be. The start of this year, I think, was the initial release date for that because I remember the trailer for Kerbal Space Program Two. Uh, yeah. It was based on that old fan made trailer that they made, and then yeah, it was like twenty twenty. Um, oh, we we didn't know what it, that year would be then. Uh, yeah, it's it's weird to see a game get pushed that far. Um, yeah, y- you wonder I mean, what we're, we're... you wonder what Kerbal Space Program Two looks like. Uh, yeah, because in my head I, I just picture one again, <laughs> and it's like, what else can they do? Are they gonna mm-hmm. like make create your own carbon? Is it gonna be yeah. a thing where it's like, not only can you go to the moon, you can go to these other dimensions. You can make like a space of whatever, and that's why we need till twenty twenty three. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, it, that's a game. With that people. one, it it just echoes to me, uh, Metroid uh, Prime Four. Just mm-hmm. how far back it got pushed, and I was like, okay, that- yeah. I mean, we won't know, but I, maybe they even just scrapped it and started over. I, I don't know. That's me speculating. But that that's a long push. Oh, I should I, I meant to look at this before the so show. Jason Schreier had an article back when it got delayed the first time, basically explaining what went on, and he was like citing okay. that article uh when this announcement came. I forgot to read that, but mm. Schreier probably has the scoop. Uh he probably knows like what's going on. Uh, are you looking up, uh, looking it up right now? Uh, actually, I'm answering Tim. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, right. Um, Plate Station, which is a company we brought up on the show before, uh, yes, was selling to customize different colored plates for your PS5. Uh, has fallen into controversy. It has been shut down by Sony. Um, bummer. <laughs> bummer. That sucks. It also tells me that Sony's probably doing this too. Yeah, uh, that that if it got shut down that fast, Sony's already in the process of this, and I don't know, maybe Christmas time or early next year. Here's plates to change it out, or God of War, Ragnarok. Right, here's your plate. It makes me wonder about the price. Are they going to price it similarly? Are they going? I, I assume it's going to be more now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I that really sucks. Had, I, it was a yeah, it was a good idea. I really had hope for like millions of different plate variants just from people on like i don't know if they're gonna keep this going with other companies mm-hmm. whether it's just like the launch window they want to get out their their thing first but then later down the line they'll let 
people on Redbubble do their custom ones or whatever, yeah. uh, or whether they're going to, like, for this whole generation, we're going to bring in stories, but no, they are seeking and destroying anyone who dare sell a custom plate. <laughs> We've not even heard of Brown. Like, why are you even making them Brown? Uh, there's just, like, a, a big plate now with Xbox on it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be out there eventually. That's, that's going to happen, yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's anything to do... I don't know if they have a patent on the plate specifically. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's just about protecting the patent. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, even at the time when, when we were talking about this in the show, we were talking about, you know, what is the legality of this? How <laughs> have they got their hands on a plate? Is it the right mm-hmm. plate? Uh, and it turns out that all of those questions were no. <laughs> uh, it's not legal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sucks. I really want my black side plates. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm still shocked that we don't know any more about the black PlayStation Five mm-hmm. or the at least Dual Sense. Yeah. I, I I figured by now we would at least have. Oh yeah, we do have a black Dual Sense coming next year or something like mm-hmm. that. Because that that's been the biggest foul, biggest cry that I've heard is most people just want the the black version yeah. of the PlayStation Five or the Dual Sense. I, I get it. It's not like you can't. I'm just gonna spray paint it. Like I'm just gonna take I mean, the plates yes. off and spray paint them black. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, like everyone could do that. It's just like the customizable things, like the art pieces yeah. that I was hoping for. I like the camo mm-hmm. ones. Uh, it's all DIY now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, more bad Sony news. PT yes. was originally playable via backwards compatibility, but Sony were told to change it, and now you cannot play it on the PS5. This is from someone at either the Verge or Polygon. I can't remember. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, it's Polygon. Yeah. Uh when they were had, having their early hands-on back in September, they played PT on the PS5. It was there. They just couldn't report oh. it yet. Uh, and then unnamed publisher came in and said, nah, not happening. Uh, yeah. Like, they, yeah. They, they already couldn't get it on their PS5, like, through the store, obviously, but they mm-hmm. had the PS4 terabyte thing, uh, uh, the PS4 hard drive thing, plugging it in. It worked. No, it doesn't. Yeah. How big of a vendetta? How much do they hate Kojima? <laughs> like, I really think it's a lot, to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> I, th- I think it's like, we just want to wipe that name and disassociate it from Konami as hard as possible and just scrub it completely away. And I, it sucks because I, PT would have been, I, I hope would have been great. I mean, Gail Montertor is one of my favorite directors of all time, but Wow, I mean, Sony's Sony and unnamed developer are going out of their way to scrub stuff, and mm-hmm. it's weird. John, they could sell PT for seventy dollars on the PlayStation yeah. Store, and they would sell. They would yeah. sell out, <laughs> uh, but they refuse to. There's just there's just something there where it's like we will not have it. I refuse. I and mean, there's uh, too much bad blood, I guess. But yeah, I'm with you. Like. Playstations that had uh, have PT on it were going for like a thousand dollars. Yeah, it makes me wonder if at a time was Joe's Diner playable on a PS5 and like the this publisher stepped in and said like, "Nah, we're not no, having no. it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that that is a PlayStation 4 exclusive, and that's where we want Joe lives. Yeah. on the PS4, Jojima left, and we had to wipe his name <laughs> from the. the well slate. done. Yeah, well done. You. Uh. <laughs> And so, yeah, there's a lot of blood, blood, bad blood there. I think Schreier's writing about it in his next book, Joe's Diner, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> if he doesn't, tweet at him. Uh, and in our final story of the day, Square Enix reports $62 million loss on Avengers. And that's... They, they didn't actually say that. That's a conservative estimate of how much they mm-hmm. lost uh, with that. Um I'm just pulling up the tweet thread here. This is from David Gibson on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Apparently, the game cost is somewhere between 100 and 200 million dollars, uh, which, like, I'm sure sounded like a good idea at the time, right? Yeah. We're making an Avengers game. It's gonna set Marvel's the hottest shit in the world right now, uh, and it just didn't take. Um, nope. Seems like they only sold 60 percent of what they wanted to. Uh, which again makes me think, like even at hundred percent, that'd probably only be breaking even. Like, yeah. were they were they hoping to exceed expectations? That's always what I'm wondering. Is like, 
you always hear these companies saying like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 did way above expectations and you wonder like mm. did you just set expectations low so that you could say that you to say that yeah. you exceeded expectations and I think that's one of their things here where I'm sure the planned sales were lower than what they actually hoped for and mm. it's now that the actual sales were even lower than that um, yeah yeah, I think they I, just vastly overestimated the appeal of a Avengers game that didn't have the likenesses of the real actors yes. and was multiplayer online grinding. <laughs> yeah. And the weird one with uh, Spider-Man being PlayStation exclusive. Yeah. Do you Which, think that affects sales a lot? I think so. Yeah. I I, I mean, it, let's be honest. I, I was not high on this game at all at any point. I, I liked the idea, but I, I'm not the biggest Destiny fan. I'll be absolutely honest. I played it. It was fun. And that's what it kind of gave to me. And that's what they were looking for. But I'm with you. I think it was the appeal. We're going to try and get the appeal of the MCU. But that doesn't look like Chris Evans or uh, Robert Downey Jr. or anything. So it, it was just kind of one of those looking at it. And you're like, okay, if I squint my eyes just a little bit. Okay, it's the Avengers. So I, I think they banked on more of tony uh, tony stark and iron man and that concept and not registering or putting together that no it's really robert downey jr that made that character and you, when you pull that character out it kind of loses that magic to it mm -hmm. so i i believe that's probably what happened and uh, sony just being absolutely stingy with spider-man yeah but again like imagine the development cost of this if they did oh, get yeah. robert downey jr and all this. oh yeah yeah oh god that would have been like half a billion dollar game mm -hmm. so i i mean i get it i understand why it's just one of those like they banked on it and i think it was just because it's not what people know of the 20 ish movies that have been out yeah and like i i haven't looked into the game because again I, it's just not my cup of tea i know that there were supposed to be like dlcs or packs like you get ant-man and now that marvel has the rights to the fantastic four and uh x-men again I assume that we're going to be able to download or buy DLC packs that have like Wolverine and Mr. Fantastic and whatnot. whatnot. But I think that's just that appeal of no one really cares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's I, just. Um, <sighs> it's not like Troy Baker and Nolan North are like diet versions or like cheap versions yeah, of, no, of no, the they're, actors. They're like, they're really good and like they yeah. do really good performances in the game from what I understand. It's just, and, I, I feel like it was too soon after mm -hmm. end game where it's, yeah. it's it's just like people hadn't worn off it yet yeah it was still too fresh and i think that was the bank on it was like all right it's still fresh and in with people talking to site guys and then it just didn't translate over correctly from the passive media that is movies to the active media which is video games mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that that transferred like square enix and um Crystal Dynamics wanted it, which sucks because I actually love the Tomb Raider games. I think Crystal Dynamics did a great job with Tomb Raider, but mm -hmm. yeah, I this one just it didn't seem like it was hitting the ground correctly. Yeah, I think it's the thing of having to make six characters mm -hmm. feel good uh, that we talked about even beforehand, and then yeah, just like if you're not gonna go with the likenesses of the movies, like trying to skip straight ahead to like your own. A yeah. universe and like w with its own stakes that partly leverage Which, what the movies have and also like no not at all i what i don't understand and i i haven't read the comics in years why did they go with a likeness closer to the comics or was this just complete from the ground up their own characters i think uh they were going as close as possible they could go to to the cinematic universe without cinematic touching universe? okay yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it, just yeah, based right. on it's... me looking at character models and stuff. Sure. Um, yeah. But in terms of actual like story delivery, it felt more comic booky uh, from what mm -hmm. I've seen. And yeah, I just like I wonder uh, if you had a got like if you just had to pick one of those like Black mm -hmm. Widow, like taking your experience from Tomb Raider with Crystal Dynamics and say, hey, we're just going to make a Black Widow game, and the movie's coming out at some. Oh, that'd point. be great. Yeah, if they just focused that on been that, awesome, yeah, so good. <laughs> Um, yeah, that I would have bought that in a heartbeat. But yeah, I think they tried to sell it to Square Enix as like, hey, the money that Avengers made, we can make that kind of money. Give us that kind of money. And then you, yeah, money the Avengers made, money that um, like the games as a service makes, it's fantastic. 
we can do this with the Avengers and the Marvel universe. Let's go. And it didn't work. <laughs> and so like, it's not a uh, Marvel ultimate Alliance. It's not a mm-hmm. great game. It's like a seven, but like in yeah. terms of development costs and like making it your own thing that people like ultimate Alliance feels like a more successful game than this Avengers game. <laughs> I, I actually agree. I think it is a more successful game. Yeah. I, at least more people liked it. I, mm-hmm. I, I know there's pockets that everyone likes a game, but it feels like everyone was higher on Ultimate Alliance than they have been on uh, this Avengers game. Yeah, I think it's just that thing where it's like it felt more comic booky. You can like mm-hmm. pick from a pantheon of characters, um, even Spider Man, even though it's, it's yeah. Switch only. Wild that they could just do that. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, but no, I again going back to Spider Man, like it's so mean to just like have like one of your friends being able to like swing about and be cool and be (laughs) spider-man and it's just like this is my toy you can't have this (laughs) that uh, that actually sounds like sony to me i'll just i'll just say (laughs) (laughs) yeah this is my toy this is mine you don't get to play my toy (laughs) oh you have skyrim live kratos (laughs) that's what sony sounds like in my head it's like (laughs) Yeah, I got sack boy. What do you have? Super lucky still. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the rich kid at the even though Microsoft yeah. is way richer, but like oh, yeah, Sony it, just feels right now like the rich kid is just like, yeah, look at all uh, my shiny what, toys. Look what I got. What do you have? Oh, my Ori toy the got the ninety three on Metacritic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, um. So yeah, that's all the stories we uh, are going to cover this week. A bit of a slower week, but again, we're wrapping up towards next gen. Uh, yes. Do we want to talk about what our plans are next week regarding next sure. gen stuff? Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. So we're planning to do something to, uh, regarding next gen, some sort of stream uh, as close as possible to launch window. Again, we'll be getting yes. these systems the same day as you, so we'll need to set them up and, and uh, all these other things. I won't actually have mine because I'm European. Yeah. And we're a week behind all of you guys. Uh, but John will have his, hopefully, by then. And we'll be yes. hopefully doing a stream where we're all on Discord, uh, talking about the PS5 and the Series X, uh, answering your questions, playing a mm-hmm. few games, giving you an impression of what these systems are like. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm really excited. I, I can say uh, I get my Xbox Series X at 6 o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. because I signed up with Best Buy and they called me and, said you can come in at six i was like okay that works for me i'm off that day so i will get it set up asap i'll probably do something social media wise doing yeah. the unboxing of it or maybe even here i'm not 100 sure mm-hmm. and then uh amazon has said that i should get my playstation 5 on november 12th which is my birthday so i just don't know if it gets here in the morning i can get it unwrapped real fast and we can jump on if it's any later it'll probably be friday morning or something like that yeah uh, Tim points out that he should have his console by then too. Uh, cool, awesome. The idea I had when like PS5 was being revealed was I thought it'd be awesome if on launch night, me, uh, you, Tim, and potentially Keith could do Sackboy four-player co-op. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they announced this week that online's not available at lunch. It's just local co-op. Uh, they're yeah. bringing it in later. And I won't have mine anyway. Uh so that, yeah, that that's not possible. But I thought that'd be really mm. good. Like on the night of everyone jump into Sackboy, let's go, just just, just go, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I did get a text today from my retailer saying like, "Hey, mm. we it's it's in the hands of the delivery people now. It'll be with you on nice. the day of release. Hopefully, like they've been known to mess up before these particular people with giving out games early when they shouldn't have. Maybe I'll get yeah. mine a few days before. Who knows." Maybe I have it already. Maybe I just haven't gone downstairs yet and I might be sitting there. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll just have to listen to you describe the... I have a challenge for you, John. Okay. Uh, so haptic feedback is a big thing mm-hmm. with this gen. And hopefully we're going to be diving into a little bit of uh, Astro Astro's Playroom. And yeah. so, you know, you'll be, you'll be trying to describe this to people. Okay. Uh, but obviously we don't have it in our hands. We can't know, right? Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm trying to think of other ways you could convey to people what haptic feedback feels like. And All right. in times like this, I turn to art. And so particularly poetry. 
And so by okay. the end of our PS5 stream, I would okay. like you to make a haiku to sum up God. what haptic feedback feels like. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Okay. I'm d- uh, fine. Well, we- I'll do yeah. this. I-, I can, I will say that, and uh, thanks to Tim too, uh, I plugged my PlayStation 5 controller into actually Rosa's computer for some odd reason didn't work with mine and I pulled up Spotify just to feel the haptic feedback. Mm-hmm. It is the strangest thing in the world to be feeling music at the same time that you're listening to it. Yeah. Like d- give me a sense. Like you were you were popping off in Discord like this is amazing. Uh yeah. what was so we like, found like what? we went through different genres. Like and I'm talking like we had like musicals. I went through some chip tune video game music went through R&B, found some country music, acapella. I was just like, where's the range of this thing? And obviously a deeper range really works, but we found out that there's a there's a song called uh, Hot Milk, I believe it's what it's <laughs> called. Or, uh, oh, let me pull up my Spotify real fast. Uh, it's by a, a chiptune artist named uh, Snail's House. Mm-hmm. And that bad boy, literally, that it went from into the actual actually i got my thing right here it started the bass actually started here in the actual wing itself and then when it went to a higher tune it actually i could feel it in the triggers like i felt individual points with this with this song and it was one of the strangest but cool things i've ever felt that that is next gen to me so i actually really really like that so i'm kind of hoping i'm i I know we've heard about like Astro's uh, playroom that you can feel walking on the sand. Mm. Hot. Okay. So yeah, thank you, Rose. Hot milk by uh, snail house. One great artist. I love it. And so that one went pretty well. And then I try, I love Raleigh Ritchie. And so I went through a couple of their, his songs. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's right here. I went through a couple of his songs and most of it, when he, a good bass came in right in the actual wings itself. And then actually through a little bit of the buttons itself. It, it was very, very impressive i didn't think it would work and so thank you tim for actually like hey did you try this no and i think rose and i spent about the next hour just going through different music banner of the opera it was okay but there were like i tried uh shovel knight's uh theme song i couldn't feel anything so there i, I don't know if there's a register or a range within the uh dual sense itself but there were some times that it, i couldn't feel anything or I felt everything. It just depended on the range that the tune or the music was in. Yeah, that excites me. I'm excited for a lot of this talk when mm. uh, we do our PS5 stream. It just comes yes. to me now when we were talking about dry spaces on the on the PS5 and how we couldn't explain it because it doesn't have quick resume. How big do you think Astro's Playroom is? Because that's preloaded. Oh, that is preloaded. Yeah. Well, I guess I got to go after 50 gigs at least. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I ever know. I think it was just like it's packed in with the OS. So I just won't tell you. Yeah. Um, but we'll hopefully know about that. That's a good question. Yeah. I, I mean, that's kind of your showstopper, one, two switch, uh, like Nintendo land kind of thing. So I would expect it to probably be fairly hefty. So I can. And so we can all kind of get used to what this haptic feedback is and hopefully stays around because I know Nintendo doesn't really use it anymore. So I, I kind of want haptic feedback to stay in its thing. Like I'm excited to play a race car. Like I, I want to play a race car game, a driving game, because I want to feel the road in my controller. Mm-hmm. Also, now I'm going to have to, I wasn't going to, but now I'm going to have to get Star Wars Squadrons because I want to see what it feels like to get hit. Ooh, okay. All Flying right. around. I, I want to see how, it, how it's going to, feel with that so yeah it, i'm gonna be testing a lot of games just to see how it feels yeah um i was trying to figure out if i could deduce the size of astro's playroom based off the size of astrobot rescue mission but mm-hmm. then i completely like d- do vr files take up more than normal game files like what's the deal there i'm just not gonna try you know? yeah <laughs> uh but yeah <laughs> Um, so that's our show, everyone. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, this is Playhouse Live, where we go through the gaming news of the week. We do this every Saturday live. We record it live at twitch.tv slash Playhouse Live. It's also available on YouTube the day after and also on all the places where you listen to podcasts. It's on Spotify, yes. it's on Apple, it's on Google, on Amazon now for some reason. We're right up there with the Stephen Fry audiobooks. Uh <laughs> 
so yeah, uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of this, hopefully with a bit of a follow-up. Um, by then we should have done uh, at least one next-gen stream. Uh, yes. So yeah, follow Playhouse Live for that at the very least. And yeah, uh, we will see you again for another one of these next week. Uh, hopefully with more spicy rumors. Until then. Yeah. Bye. Bye.